Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to five rocket launches that went terribly wrong. For me, one of my life ambitions, like one of the few things that I really, really, really want to achieve before I, I go is I'd love to go into outer space. I would love it. It would make, it would just be the ultimate for me, like the pinnacle, just to get out into space, just to see the blackness of space, the, the curvature of the earth, to be weightless, you know, to, to, to bounce around in, in zero or near zero gravity. For me, like as a massive space nerd, I would just be, it would, that's a bucket list thing for me. But, you know, it comes with massive risk, massive, because the amount of energy required to get, you know, out off the planet is huge. So if anything goes wrong, you've got basically a massive explosive weapon beneath you um, that's propelling you out towards space. So it comes with a massive, massive risk. And, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of interesting because on the one hand, the astronauts aboard, they are aware of the risks. You know, they know that it's, it's a quite a dangerous thing here that they're doing. It's, we're talking cutting, cutting a te uh, edge technology. Um, but on the other hand, they don't want to die. You know, they don't want to, you know, of course they don't. Like, they've got families of their own and stuff. But yeah, this video should re really be an interesting one. Rocket technology has advanced rapidly over the last 60 years. And in that time, it is estimated that over 35,000 rockets have been sent to space. But wow, with such rapid innovation, you're bound to have some accidents. Space organizations oh, no. spend years making sure everything is correct. Oh. However, a single error can cause those years of work to go down the drain in a matter of seconds. Wow. From the United States all the way to China, here are five rocket launches that went horribly wrong. Did you see the shockwave of that one? In October of 2014, NASA was set to launch an unmanned Antares rocket off the Virginia coast. The goal was simple, to deliver goods to the International Space Station, something that had been done many, many times before. Unfortunately, things took a different turn that day. When the launch began, it was business as usual, but that didn't last for long. all right so far everything's going all right so far oh no Whoa. I wish the camera was a little lower to see an investigation into why the rocket failed soon followed a year later, a report came out detailing how there was an explosion within the rocket's liquid oxygen turbo pump in one of the two AJ-26 engines. This uh, caused the rocket to lose its thrust and come crashing back uh, so close to the launch pad. The explosion was triggered when stationary and rotating parts within the turbo pump came into contact with one another. The excessive amount of friction that was generated led to the ensuing fire. However, the report could not figure out what caused the issue in the turbo pump in the first place. Investigators narrowed it down to three potential issues, or perhaps some kind of combination of the three. It's possible the explosion occurred as a result of inadequate design robustness of the engine itself, which made it more susceptible to oxygen fires. It's also possible a debris such as titanium or silica got into the engine. Finally, there could have been a manufacturing defect within the engine. Investigators could not say for certain exactly what caused this disaster. Luckily, no one was harmed in this launch. Yeah, like, just, maybe if it was higher in the air, it could have restarted. No, but it sounds like from the sounds of it, the, the mechanism just, like, there's no way it would have been able to resolve before it hit the ground. On July 1st of 2013, a Russian rocket was set to take off. However, things quickly went askew when the rocket began to veer off course. You can see in the video how significantly it's skewing oh, to the no. side, which yeah. can only mean disaster. It's just going to go straight back down, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> 
It didn't take long for the rocket to begin breaking apart before falling back to Earth and exploding. Oh, no. the shock wave wow wow findings from later found that the failure was likely due to an emergency shutdown of the booster's engines and about 17 seconds into takeoff luckily the rocket was unmanned but it was carrying 600 tons of highly toxic kerosene ammo oh. and heptil fuel which oh were spilled my. all over the surrounding area. While the fuel did give off a poisonous smoke, it was partly contained thanks to nearby rain at the launch site. Unfortunately, the people of Baikonur, a town about 36 miles away from the launch, were still in harm's way. An alert went out telling them to stay inside with the windows closed until further notice. The rocket was insured for 6 billion rubles, which comes out to about 182 million American dollars. The failure came on the heels of a slew of rocket launch mishaps to occur in Russia. Three satellites were lost in December of 2010 when a different Proton rocket also failed during launch. After this particular incident, all Proton rockets had to be grounded for months until a detailed investigation could be carried out to try to prevent future disasters. I mean, that makes perfect sense, you know. You, you don't want to send another one up the next day and it, and it explodes just like this one. But yeah, the setbacks must have been quite hard to deal with, like, you know, for, for the sake of the missions and stuff. On January 17, 1997, a rocket that went by GPS IIR-1 was set to be the first Block IIR GPS satellite to set flight. It was supposed to operate as a component of the United States Air Force Global Positioning System, but it blew apart only 13 seconds after it took off. You can see how quickly things go from exciting to devastating in one humongous blast. Almost looks like a firework, doesn't it? Like a gigantic firework. The rocket took off from Cape Canaveral. It was found that the rocket's flight termination system was activated via its onboard computer. This detonated the explosive charges located around the rocket, causing it to go up in flames. When it exploded, the rocket was roughly 1,600 feet in the air, making it the lowest altitude explosion to occur at Cape Canaveral since the Atlas Centaur AC-5 disaster in 1965. Later, an investigation found that the failure was due to a crack in the casing of the number two solid rocket motor. This crack began to form at T plus six seconds, and it only got worse from there. At T plus 12 seconds, the SRB casing finally ruptured, resulting in debris getting stuck at the number 8 SRB right next to it. That led to the motor failing, and at that point, there was no hope of salvaging the mission. A manual destruct command was set to terminate the launch for safety reasons. Residents of the surrounding area were advised to stay inside and keep their windows closed because vapors from the rocket could be toxic or irritating. The impact was still felt in the nearby town. Some damage to store windows were reported as much as 10 miles away from the launch site. But buildings can be repaired. Luckily, nobody was killed from this incident. Yeah, like, it's just got to be, you know, as an engineer, imagine you're an engineer that's been working on these, this, this rocket launch for, like, a year or two years. You know, you've planned everything, you've put in so much work, the hours, you know, the sacrifice, all that stuff, and just to see it go up in flames in, like, 10 seconds after launching. It's got to be, like, pretty devastating, isn't it? The Vanguard TV-3 <sighs> was the United States' first attempt to get a satellite into orbit around the planet. 
The world saw several successful Soviet launches with Sputnik 1 and 2, so the United States designed the Vanguard TV-3. This was a small satellite made to test the launch abilities of the three-stage Vanguard and study the effects of the Earth's orbit on the vessel. It was also meant to obtain geodetic measurements through the orbit's analysis. The key words in that last sentence are meant to. The launch was set to take place on December 6, 1957. In just two seconds after liftoff, the rocket began to lose thrust. It fell back to Earth onto its launch pad. As it settled back onto the ground, the fuel tanks ruptured and subsequently exploded. The rocket was destroyed, and the launch pad sustained extreme damage. There were a number of failures during the year, and the United States promptly announced them. The first and most Spectacular of these was Vanguard at the end of 1957. Wow, this is a massive explosion. There were other Vanguard failures, all achieved takeoff, but trouble occurred either in the second or third stages. An investigation ensued, but they could not determine the precise cause of the accident. It's believed that the fuel system malfunctioned in some way. After the incident, the satellite was too badly damaged to be salvaged. However, it went on to be displayed in the National Air and Space Museum in the Smithsonian. Yeah, that was probably the biggest fireball, like, out of all of these videos so far. That one just kept growing and growing. It almost swallowed up the entire tower on the uh, left-hand side. On February 15, 1996, a satellite called Intelsat 708 was supposed to be launched from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in China. However, the satellite itself was built by the American company Space Systems Laurel. You can see the rocket take off and immediately you know something is wrong because it's heading in the complete wrong direction. It's like the Russian one, isn't Later it? Later in the video, you see the rocket transforming into a fireball before crashing back to the ground. The rocket ended up crashing in a nearby village where six people lost their lives, according to a Chinese report. However, estimates that came out of America suggest that the number could be much higher. A video crew later went to the village where many buildings were completely destroyed. An investigation took place afterward, which determined that there was a failure within the rocket's guidance system. The investigation forced the Long March Rock program to greatly improve its reliability. The program did not experience another failure until 2011. However, the parties involved with the disaster did not get out of it unscathed. The investigation led to a huge political controversy in the United States. The US government conducted its own investigation, which found that information from the report had been given illegally to China. Space Systems Laurel had to pay $20 million to settle charges of violating export controls. Rocket launches are necessary to support our modern way of living. However, all the time and money put into them can't always ensure they'll go off without a hitch. Yeah, all true. space organizations can do is learn from these mistakes and try to make sure future disasters don't have a chance to happen. Be sure to click the link on screen to- My. I'm sure there's people who watch this video and think, oh, why do we bother? You know, they're so expensive and like, can't we use that money for, you know, other things, etc. But, you know, without rocket launches, putting satellites in, in the air, like you wouldn't be able to watch this video, maybe. Um, we need satellites to support internet, um, the internet systems, to support like weather prediction systems, like, GPS like there's just so many massive like like society like infrastructure like I'm gonna stop why do I say like so much but you know you know the point I'm making we we do need rocket launches unless someone can think of another way to get a satellite uh, you know a hundred thousand feet in the air but you know I'm hoping over time with the improvement in technology we will see less and less of these types of explosions I mean the last one I've I heard was um 
was it a SpaceX one? It might have been SpaceX a fair few years ago, like six years ago or so. Uh, SpaceX have gotten really, really good at, at these now. I don't think, aside from the, the testing of the new Starship, they've not had an explosion in a long time. So hopefully this is the end of, I mean, it's probably not, but hopefully the number of these explosions happening massively reduces. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.